<laughs> kind of pose for the caption, like, so not the caption, the thumbnail. Hello, welcome to my vlog. Today, we have my best friend, Ishida. We're gonna talk to you about... about yeah, we don't really have a title. Oh no, we're gonna be like, cat pliables and tea about starting your career. Was I supposed to say that with you? No, it's okay. <laughs> so I got my usual um, electric mermaid with um, mixed base of acai and pitaya. So lucky to have this. <laughs> she doesn't have her down in Florida. Mm -hmm. oh. But she relocated to for her new job. Well, I was like a year ago. I got the Nutella Coco Bowl. It has coconut base and Nutella. I'll talk about how we met. It's actually... Um, through a um, reverse engineering showcase. We're both part of it because we're both freshmen. We were taking, uh, is it called FED 101? You were in a, like a team. So you like you would do a group project and present uh, at the showcase with your team. One of my team members was somehow related, <laughs> not related, <laughs> you Sam. Turned out that it was Sam's ex-boyfriend. <laughs> ex-boyfriend went over to Sam's booth and he was like oh let me let me introduce you to my my teammates um, and one of them is this you know really cool girl Ishita and so Sam comes over and um, the first thing she says is oh my god I love your eyebrows <laughs> <laughs> later on we realized that we were also in the same chemistry class and fall asleep in that class <laughs> and then she would tell um, the guy I was dating she would be like Sam always falls asleep and she sits right in the front. She was like in a like a sitting position like this and just had, had her eyes closed and all the way in the front. After that semester, once you know Sam got to know me, she realized that we had so many classes in common the mm -hmm. following semester. And what I would do is like the platform we used for our classes, it showed you the class syllabus. And on two of my classes, um, I saw she was on there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. I what a stalker. What did I say? I was like, we have the same classes. She was like, oh, it looks like we're taking materials and engineering processes together. Um, I'm so glad I know someone in that class. And let me tell you, we weren't even friends. And this girl trying to force her friendship on me. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice because I was uh, I was in the same boat. Like, I didn't really know anyone. We had those classes together. We would like chill. We had some like crazy things. <laughs> I, I, I mentioned this in a vlog, but then Sean cut me off, but... There was one time where I had like toilet paper hanging out of my pants and I was like, oh my god, she didn't have toilet paper hanging out of my pants and she laughed so hard we weren't even friends yet. Sam was coming from somewhere and she just had like a long thing of like toilet paper Girl, coming. I, <laughs> I, last time I went to the bathroom that day was before my like calc recitation class. Uh oh. And no one, to no one told me. <laughs> so she, you probably walked it on. Yo! Know. Like a fool. And we started hanging out. We just like made sure that we were taking the same classes every year. Yeah. And making sure that we were in the same club. This girl. <laughs> and if you're a long time watcher, you would know. We were like, girl, like, um, run for PR coordinator for a Society of Women Engineers. And I was like, wow, what do I do with that? Year? And then she was also like, hey, apply to become a peer mentor, like for a freshman. And I was like, wow. What I do that? <laughs> <laughs> they ended up being honestly like the best decisions of my life because like you know not only did we become closer as friends but we also like just learned a lot about ourselves, mm -hmm. how to grow our careers, how to deal with people. Just through like little interactions we would have with like club members or as we would go like through teaching our freshmen and stuff. Because yeah. when when I ended up becoming a peer mentor, we were co-mentors for the same yeah. Uh, engineering cohort for two years in a row, right? No, no, no. You no. were okay. I was only a peer mentor one year. Yeah, senior year. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it was the best. But, year of my life. but her co-mentor the year before. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> just having Sam by my side, just having that one friend, you know, that one peer, really helped my confidence. And, like it opened me up. Like you know, I was more open-minded uh, to new opportunities because before I used to be like, you know, oh, you know, I don't have anyone do that with me, or like I, I don't know anyone who knows enough to like uh, guide me. After meeting Sam, we would both learn together and we would both grow together. That's like one thing that I I really you know like encourage everyone that like. 
Find someone. Find someone you have freshman yeah. year. And only find people who are smart. <laughs> I feel the exact same way because of her. Like just like I said before, it's because of her I joined Society of Women Engineers and peer mentoring. And those things are like one of the two most defining things in like my life. And also I remember freshman year, she worked at um a, an uh, office university, on campus. Yeah. yeah. And she was like, oh yeah, I have work, I work on campus. And I was like, oh, that's so cool, I want to work on campus too. And that led me to my first job on campus. I worked at the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, which doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> she made a lot of uh, good friends and like she knew more people than me. So it always helped out. Oh, you me. knew more people than me? Girl, Girl. you're sweet. Like, she was a PR and like she had connections. She had connections with people. Well, I would walk around campus with her <laughs> and she'd be like, oh, Sorry, I got tired of this person. Hi! It's like five people. <laughs> we just became more extroverted together. We used to be like one of those people, you know, very quiet, judgmental, just, you know, judging people silently. Um, but yeah, we're very, very different now. Yeah, exactly. We, we talked about this before too. Like, we came into college very judgmental, like, not just of other people, but also of ourselves. And we thought like, oh, at this point, we need to be ready for our careers, like, if we don't know something, then yeah, like we don't want to ask because we should know everything already. Mm -hmm. Things like that, because it was all just very intimidating, and it doesn't. When you first enter like a career fair, it doesn't seem like everyone's very approachable. But that's why we're here today um. to give you. <clears throat> Our advice. <laughs> so disclaimer, by the way. So in a very uh, fresh or beginning stage of our career, so don't take this too literally. <laughs> um, you know, you. I think everybody learns from an experience, yes. and whatever advice that we will give is from our personal experience. Yes, so, definitely. So your experience might differ. What worked for us might not work for you. Yeah. But uh, if you want like somewhere to start, here we are. We, we out here with our. Uh, Cucumber mint lemonade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went, we spent so much money. We always spend a lot of money. So. <laughs> I'm a Taurus and she's a Libra. <laughs> Why did you choose mechanical engineering? I chose mechanical engineering because I it's like the most broad engineering field. And when I was in high school, I was really good at math and science. And I did robotics club. And I was like, okay, well, it makes sense for me to do engineering. So I'm going to just do engineering. I ever tell you, I, I applied to our school as a math major. And then... Oh yeah! Yeah, and then I had like a, I had a revelation, and I was like, "What if I can't find a job?" So then that's why. Then that's another thing. Engineering, lots of opportunities for jobs. I think, especially mechanical, mm -hmm. because of how broad it is. I chose mechanical engineering because um, I I knew that I wanted to go in aerospace. I I just knew like from my senior year. NGI didn't really offer the aerospace engineering program, so I enrolled in their mechanical engineering program, uh, mostly because. Like Sam said, um, it's really broad and it's really the, um, fu like, you know, the most fundamental of all the engineering disciplines. Choosing mechanical engineering just seemed like a better option than like, doing something more, sorry, it's okay. Doing something more specific like aerospace engineering because then you would only be able to work either in mechanical or aerospace engineering, you know, industry. I don't think you can like go into biomedical or like, True. I don't know, civil, um, because you're just not taught structural um, analysis, you know, which is what I do now, in the same way um, when you're doing aerospace engineering. Because I've talked to people at my work who did aerospace engineering and they're like, yeah, we don't know how to analyze bolts. Like, we never learned that. Oh my god, that's interesting. Because, yeah, interestingly, okay, and um, this question is from our job. What are all the fields mechanical engineers can work in? It's like Ashita said, you're not limited to just mechanical Things. I've seen mechanical engineers go on to work in like electrical fields to go into more like civil structural fields biomedical because me uh, mechanical engineers receive just like a comprehensive education when it comes to like the principles of engineering and like the theoretical stuff you can mm -hmm. really do anything it really just depends on what classes really interest you if you really like thermodynamics heat transfer you can work in you know power industry, energy industry. If you find yourself enjoying CAD simulations, mm -hmm. there's a lot of analyst jobs that do that. Well, there's manufacturing. There's a lot of people go into manufacturing if they really like CAD yeah. and design. And if you're like really artsy and creative, you can also do animation. 
Like, True, I, engineering fundamentals you get as a mechanical engineer can really take you anywhere as long as you find the proper channels to go through. Mm-hmm. But uh, on that topic, what industry do you work in? I work in um, defense and space industry. But what I do is really focused on space. We design reflectors that kind of like, you know, they go up in space and they, um, they, um, they're like, they're called uh, unfurrable. It's Un- like unfurlable. Unfurlable, yes. She doesn't even work in <laughs> What we design is like the structure part of that reflector. So like, you know, the tubes and the parts and the mechanism that, that is you being used to um, deploy that model when it goes up in space. As a structure analyst, uh, I get a design from a designer and then I look at the design and like, you know, I think about, okay, what are the modes of failure, um, you know, on like in this design. And then um, I just have to with hand calculation and you know using the statics and stress analysis concepts i have to um pretty much prove uh that the design's adequate and ready for testing and we make sure that it's first of all safe for test engineers to test we try to like um pretty much uh, like minimize the testing efforts you know because it's expensive making a prototype and then testing it and testing it again you know it, it's very um, it's an exhausting process cool stuff you know I get to learn about new mechanisms get to look at like all this flight structure um, I also learn a little bit about how things actually work when once they're in orbit so I think yeah that that's really is the cool part of my job and I really believe that I I got to do something that I've always wanted to do Tie that in with another you, question we got. This question <laughs> is from Rucha, who asked what we find rewarding about our job. I work in um, the AEC industry, which stands for Architecture, Engineering, and Construction. I think it's really cool because I've always been interested in buildings. I have like very vivid memories of like when I would do like summer classes at local schools in my town. Usually, I would like help out and volunteer, and I would kind of be assigned to like go around to all the rooms and like. Um, deliver stuff to the teachers and I thought it was really cool to just go through a building and see what all the rooms look like. Since it was summer, they like stacked a lot of furniture out of the way so you really got to see like the bare bones of a classroom. I have had that experience actually as an engineer doing site visits, going into like empty buildings and like seeing their existing conditions, things like that. Specifically as a mechanical engineer, um, I do like HVAC and like plumbing layouts. So we designed the way that ductwork goes through a building, how to bring water service from the outside site location into the building. You also get to consider how much like the occupancy of a space affects the required heating and cooling. I think buildings are so commonplace, mm-hmm. you don't really realize how much effort goes into building and designing them that to be part of that process it's pretty cool because you never think about it i think one of the core industries of mechanical engineering is hvac yes and so while her stuff like as a structural analyst has to do with more like statics and stress analysis mine has to do more with like aerodynamics fluid mechanics the question from rucha what steps should i take in school to land my dream job start early start building your resume in september of your fall semester you're not going to have a lot of projects or experiences to put on it but at least you'll have a structure and you know that way you can know what you lack and what you can add later at least when you go to career fair right you'll have something to show to the recruiters and some recruiters will be nice enough to tell you what they're looking for so next year even if you don't get a job at that time maybe next year you'll go to the same recruiter and you'll show them the resume and you know, you'll have all the things that they once required. I feel like that just really shows that how, you know, like how much you want a job, <laughs> how much you really want to put yourself out there um, and that you're trying your best. Exactly. I feel like a lot of people get scared that if they ask too many questions or they, you know, put too much effort in when they're just freshmen, they might look like they're kissing up or whatever, or they might look inexperience but like that's the thing too like you are inexperienced and for you to show that initiative to ask questions and to show genuine interest in pursuing a career it goes a really long way like we were peer mentors yeah and we would get so excited whenever people would ask us questions because it's like let us help you from our plethora of knowledge it's just very exciting for people who are in that position you're able to learn a lot hearing about other people's experiences Mm -hmm. finding you know a peer mentor 
um, um, a, a staff mentor, a faculty mentor, um, or a, a recruiter to speak to, or even somebody from your college's like career development services is very important because they might give you tips that your normal um, class professors might not give to you. For example, we took the fundamentals of engineering exam, we became engineers in training, but we didn't know what that was until it was like right around the time yeah. for us to take it. I think if you're able to get a grasp of what certifications you want to go for, um, what classes you might want to take, and then you're able to start planning from the beginning what you want to do, it's going to help you a lot in the long run. Even if you do end up changing your mind, um, switching from one industry to another, it's going to be beneficial just because you know it, it shows yourself that you're able to take the effort and that you are capable of doing it. One of our biggest obstacles in finding a career is just that initial like insecurity of you know not yeah. feeling good enough, not feeling smart enough. So number one thing too, just prove to yourself that you can do it. That's why I said that you should start early in freshman year. So you don't really have anything to lose. Yeah, you're a freshman, you don't have much to show on your resume. So obviously the chances of getting a, an internship are you know relatively low, but that doesn't mean that like you know it doesn't you can't really get at anything out of that experience it definitely prepares you it makes you more comfortable next year when you go to that career fair and when you see the, so, those same faces of the recruiters hop on every opportunity because that's something that i didn't do like sister would say my friends would say to me like sit around go to career fair you know you're not just gonna land a job by just applying online and they were right about that you reject yourself you know you like you're not even confident enough to even like believe in yourself. So obviously the people that you know are in position to hire you will are also not going to believe in yourself. You know, hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Dude, exactly. <laughs> Michael Scott. <laughs> please, 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 just you know, hop on the right opportunities and um, network and Yes. Yeah, start early. It's very easy to say this, but you know, don't be afraid to embarrass yourself. Mm -hmm. It's a part of learning for everybody. This question is from John. Um, subscribe to LZ Films, by the way. <laughs> Do you think your college prepared you well for finding a job? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I think our college is very unique in the sense that there has always been a large emphasis placed on finding a job at college right away. I had like a career development services office to go to, career fairs. There were lots of resources that you could like take upon yourself to go to and make use of in order to prepare yourself for a job. Even if you didn't really pay attention to what they offer on campus, everyone around you would be stressing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your peers will encourage you or at least influence you to like get a job or like do something you know get it doing it research even if it's like a in um, on campus research I think that's that is just as valuable as like going out and getting an internship um, it's an experience you know it's a summer not wa wasted and yeah, just like make use of your time while you're in college for example me like I you know I was so scared to go out of my comfort zone that I don't really land an internship until after my junior year I feel like I could have gotten more experiences if I wasn't so shy and just you know scared of applying as my school did prepare me, um, I think the quality of our education was, you know, I think decent. Yeah. 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 For the price we pay at least. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, honestly, it doesn't really matter. I feel like you really shouldn't rely on just like professors or like, you know, your TAs and like, you know, your university uh, in general to see that quality of education because it also, it is also on you. There are some things that you just can't learn from other people. You just have to teach yourself. Especially when it comes to the more industry specific things, like you're going to be able to learn these things on the job, but you know, just like you said, it's not up to your professors to feed you all that information all the time. The real reason you go to university is to receive like a basic fundamental you know education on on like whatever you know field that you're specializing in uh, but it doesn't really especially with engineering you know they can't really teach you how to engineer exactly that can be taught exactly. <laughs> um, that's all on you I think being an engineer really just means you know thinking creatively thinking outside the box and exactly. nobody can really teach you that it's something that you learn like maybe you think like you don't know how to think creatively yet you're you don't know how to think outside the box yet when it comes to your industry but it is something you pick up. Um, you might be working on a task and you're like, man, you know, this would be so much easier if it was like this. You try it out that way, it's more innovative. That's engineering. I feel like 
you know, it's so easy to be surrounded by people who are super smart and they know everything about like rockets and spaceships and building things. So it's intimidating to look around and think, you know, maybe my brain doesn't work that way. But your brain does work some way. <laughs> there are things that you'll be able to recognize and um, come up with yourself that other people might not see. And that's why like, ultimately everyone's input is important regardless of you know how you might think you compare to other people just like she just said the point of engineering is to think outside the box and be innovative and you can't achieve that just by listening to the smartest person in the room all the time Don actually asked another question he asked um, what do you wish you were told in college to better prepare you for the workforce? But I feel like we answered that already yeah I guess again start early <laughs> exactly. start early and Know, you know what you want. I think exactly, that's something that yeah. you know yeah. what you want and know that it's okay to change your mind. I feel like yeah. You know, a lot of people think that oh, I'm I'm already working in this industry, so it's that's it. That's it for me. But our job actually asked a really good question. If you have job experience in industry X, how do you go about getting a job in industry Y? To like build up more on what we said earlier, I think it's it's really just like first of all, you know, really knowing what you want, right? Second thing is preparing yourself by getting involved in the industry itself. You might go to the co conference uh, that that industry is actually organizing. Like example, if you want to go from uh, engineering to business right you would start going to the conferences that are like you know more business specific or you would start uh, getting a certification that adds value to your resume not only does it look good on your resume but it also in preparing for it you are able to educate yourself more on that field recruiters receive your resume they often filter out by specific keywords mm -hmm. if you do have a, um, a certification they're looking for and usually you can find this in um, job descriptions as well um, then you automatically stand out it would also be education going back to that same point of like you know call, making yourself qualified you can get a masters in business if that's what you want From the early on if you're not too sure you can like do major in something and then minor in like you know maybe business or something like that there's so many people that we know that have done that and they're like right now they're trying out both it's like a combination of both engineering and business and i think that's something that's on the rise and it will be for quite a long time in future People yeah switch industries all exactly. the time i know it's it seems really hard and really scary when you do plan to do it but people do it all the time and like what i said before it all comes down to having that trust in yourself that mm -hmm. you're capable that you're smart enough it's really all about learning to adapt to see the environment you're in it's about learning how to listen it's about learning how to work well with a team when you enter a new industry or even a new job you're going to pick those things up as you go along even if you're in the same industry you will find that like all the companies have their own way of doing things you know so you'll always learn when you start exactly exactly i actually recently switched jobs i'm in the same industry and it still took me some time to get mm. used to because we use different software we just like handle things differently administratively and the products we work on are different at my previous job we did a lot of like educational projects at my new job we're doing a lot of like residential and commercial projects even though like, working in the same industry it's not as if my old job is preparing me perfectly for my new job there's always some learning involved and there's always like a time period of getting used to things another tip i have is just to be patient with yourself mm -hmm. because That's ishida and i have just beat ourselves up all the time <laughs> we're like oh my god we're not doing enough we're not this and that and we expect ourselves to be perfect but no one else expects that of you whenever you start a new job obviously it's difficult it's still it's been a year it's still difficult i'm still struggling at my job See? you know every job you start will be difficult so the way to go about it is to just accept that first yes exactly. <laughs> like i said my new job is in the same industry as my old job and i remember i felt really bad for a long time because i felt like I didn't learn as much from my old job as I should have. I felt like my new employers gave me the offer under the impression that I would know everything already, that I would be perfect already. But no one expects that from you, ever. And one last question. This is from Pooja. I went to high school with her. Is the workplace just as sexist as the classroom? And how do you combat the microaggressions? 
This is a good question. If you don't know, a microaggression is a statement, action, or incident regarded as an instance of indirect, subtle, or unintentional discrimination against members of a marginalized group. This particularly applies to women in the engineering industry just because women statistically are a minority in engineering. Not that I've ever had like a case where I had to deal with, you know, microaggression, but if there was a case like that and I would speak up and second thing is even if that doesn't work out you know you try to do your best example would be like oh you know I'm gonna give this like difficult task to somebody and I'll just give you like a leftover work because you're a woman and you're just a, like a level one engineer in that case what you do is just you know you try to shine through whatever you get exactly um, exactly I did feel that way uh, I've interned at the same place for like multiple summers at that point I had been like the most experienced intern working there I would still notice that they would give uh, more work to like the boy intern who just started and it made me feel really bad uh, at the time I had a mentor at my workplace she was an older engineer and she retired since then but she told me like it's gonna happen it's inevitable if they doubt you you have to prove them wrong by working to your best capacity don't let whatever they say or do get to you because that will in turn affect your work it's also um, good to just in general find a mentor mm -hmm. and I got this from a sweet conference one year find a mentor who supports you and advocates for you in these situations because I did find out later on after I spoke with her because I was really sad she Aww. went to our director of operations to tell him how I was feeling and what I was going through and then from there he was able to like fix the situation and yeah overall like don't be afraid to speak up i feel like it's scary to speak up and yeah. you might also feel like intimidated and i think that's completely normal but in the end you know how smart you are yeah if if you're working at a place where they're sexist towards you Bitch, we work at the same place. <laughs> you are not better than me. Oh, yeah, even if it's just not about microaggression, you know, in, in any any other way if that, like, if there's a coworker and if you have a conflict with them, or if there's like you know any hard feelings i think you should just address them right because after all you are in a workplace you're not in like fifth grade you know it's like exactly. oh yeah i'll just hold grudges and it will be fine exactly because at this point we're all adults yeah. they treat you a certain way because of their like preconceived notion of who you are how mm. smart you are then it's on them for thinking that way it's times that people just are like that you know they're doing it unintentionally exactly. important thing is to address it first and if it ex escalates even after you have you know brought that brought that up with that person i think you should really just talk to the person higher than him you know like exactly. a manager because at some point it does become an issue where hr can get involved mm -hmm. if you do feel threatened historically these things have not been on the side of women but it is important though to address it with your higher ups i read this thing where it's like if you do end up going to court this is like, ooh. But if you do end up going to court and, you know, pressing charges against your workplace for letting this behavior continue, the main thing they want you to do is make sure that you brought up with HR first. If HR didn't do anything, if HR dismisses your concerns, and you win the case automatically. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, as hard as it is sometimes, definitely do your best to go through the proper channels. I also feel like when it comes to the classroom as well, the smartest people in our classroom are always girls yeah and i think maybe it's because of that we didn't really experience as much microaggressions in the classroom maybe it was just like our university culture but a lot of the guys at our school were just you know very open-minded the main things that we did experience though was like when we would take advantage of resources coming from the society of women engineers as would be like oh well that's why all these girls have jobs <laughs> already and you have to be like well you know there aren't Statistically, there aren't as many girls in engineering and that's why we need, you know, these opportunities and the resources to be made available to us. And then the rebuttals were usually like, well, all the girls I know have internships anyway. And it's because, bitch, like, it's because they work hard. <laughs> Tell you the tr truth, you know, you're not always guaranteed a job or internship when you go to these conferences. Exactly. You should never feel entitled because that's what I hear a lot of people say about, like, oh, like, this person took my job. This person took my spot at this university or whatever, but that's never the case. I feel like don't blame other people. It's like, you know, this this whole conference is mostly for women. You'll see a lot of guys. There's like, oh my God, 40% of the 
you know the crowd is guys and they're there getting a job exactly and guess what those two years that i went to conference and didn't get hired for an internship or a job was because of my marriage you know i i lacked qualification and i'm sure that there was some other girl or a guy you know who got the job because of you know you know instead of me not because of me instead of me and she has flown into like interviews and stuff yeah provided to her from sui and she would meet men and women there and mechanical engineering is a very male dominated industry uh, there are workplaces there are organizations that think that and are better at engineering definitely and it might be a cultural thing too because i remember the supervisor i worked with previously i always felt hurt that he didn't give me as much tasks as i wanted and then one of my coworkers brought it to my attention that you know he's from a different country maybe he's just not used to working with women maybe in the way he works he likes to keep things to himself so you know in the end don't let the haters get to you it's annoying and you know they probably will get to you because like they be getting to me all the time <laughs> just fight through all the microaggressions you know shine through whatever task you get because at the end of the day that is your only opportunity right exactly so, if you get a job if you get an internship offer or a job offer that means they think you're qualified and don't let your self doubt get the better of you don't let people don't let mean people get the better of you you know for a fact that you're smart and you know that you belong there but yeah um, that's our last question i think we should end it here yeah uh, and if you have any comment, other questions comment in the comment section <laughs> yeah comment in the comment section <laughs> and we'll probably make a part 2 who yeah. knows yeah all right bye, bye.